Hello, everyone, and welcome to our February 2018 webinar. This month's webinar is on uh, Retail Pro 9 uh, loyalty plugin. So it's the, the loyalty plugin produced by Retail Pro themselves for Retail Pro 9. My name is Charlie West. I am a support technician with Canadian Retail Solutions. If this is your first webinar, I will ask that all your questions be held until the very end so we can make sure that everyone has enough time to get through the webinar. Okay, so we broke, I've broken the webinar up into a few different parts and we're gonna work through how the loyalty plugin works in Retail Pro 9. And if you're interested in it, um, I will provide some contact information for us at the end that you can reach out and we can help you um, with uh, getting the licensing and the configuration set up to start your own loyalty program. So Retail Pro 9, customer loyalty, enables you to set up loyalty programs which, which can reward fixed discounts, um, extra goods, prizes, uh, based on you know, what type of program you choose. There are a number of loyalty programs you can design uh, from a plain percentage off goods. So you can have customers who are in a, a loyalty um, program where they are eligible to receive a straight discount from the subtotal off all their sales, uh, you can set them up uh, points based where you know you buy an item, you get a certain amount of points. Those points can be used towards specific items, towards any items. Um, those points can convert into a value for a discount on the total. Um, we've got also some programs where you can give away free items. So you can mark certain items as um, available for free and then add customers to uh, to the program and when they buy or when they add that item to a sale uh, they have the option the the sales staff have the option to mark that item as being redeemed for free under loyalty um, and then the most popular one is as you spend money uh, your subtotal goes converts into a points total and that points total can be redeemed um, as as cash on future sales so you get 100 points for this item. When you go to redeem it, it's worth one penny off your next sale or a 1% um, conversion. So uh, it uses the Central's management system. If you haven't seen that before, Central's, uh, it's a completely separate database in Retail Pro. And it has its own uh, licensing setup. But it's really cool in that the loyalty program doesn't rely on ECM to send data back and forth. So it doesn't rely on polling. It will, once set up, automatically update um, that main database. So if the customer walks you know, across town and goes to the other store, they don't have to have polled it to see his loyalty uh, points are available already. Okay, and that works for preventing fraud as well. So the central service, we talked about it in the Retail Pro 8 versus Retail Pro 9 webinar, if you haven't seen that, allows you to store databases for your own gift certificates, gift cards, um, customer loyalty, uh, store credit, so that that information is updated in real time across all your locations, all right? Um, so getting right into the loyalty program in Retail Pro, once it's set up, it's uh, all the configuration for the most part is done under your customer loyalty in the customer management tool. Okay, so quickly before we get into there, there are a couple preferences you have access to. So I'm going to open up my system preferences, um, local preferences, or maybe not. Let's go into point of sale, general loyalty. So these are a couple options we'll just review quickly. Um, enable customer loyalty, pretty self-explanatory. Include the tax when accumulating points, okay? So if you want that tax um, included in their points. Charge tax on loyalty items. So if you have specific um, requirements, you need to charge tax on any items given away for free. Uh, enable customers opt-in flag. So how do you want to opt in your customers? Prompt at point of sale. So when you create a new customer on a receipt, it automatically prompts you, um, do you want to add this customer to a loyalty program? Manual. So it's required that you go into the customer record and add them to a loyalty program manually. 
or automatic at point of sale. Whenever you create a new customer, they're automatically put in the default uh, loyalty program. And that default loyalty program is defined right here below. Okay, so right now I've got it on totals based bronze. Um, next, we've got suggest using loyalty points when available. So if they have loyalty points, when they go to tender, it will automatically suggest that they can use them. And you've got a couple extra options here. Do not round. That's mostly if you're using um, really uh, high points-based programs um, or totals-based programs where it's converting, it's converting, you know, hundreds of thousands of points into small dollars, and you you can't have it rounding, or the uh, conversion process is giving them a lot of extra points or, or or removing a lot of points because of how big the discrepancy is when it converts. Um, and then you can also have it redeem the total base points as a tender instead of removing it. Um, it's a part, it's a new loyalty discount type field. So you can also have it on there added as its own tender. Depends on how you want to report on your sales. And then we've got display history type. So it, there is full history tracking, just like um, in Retail Pro 9 for customers. You can see every sale they've earned. You can also see every time they've earned loyalty um, points, rewards, when they were added. Um, and as their points are go up and down with transactions, you can track all of that as well. So a customer comes in, hey, I should have gotten 500 points for this on my last receipt. You can easily find out um, if they did or not, and maybe they've spent them since and didn't realize. Okay, so um, after that, we're gonna go into the customer loyalty tool. And I'm just going to go over some of the options that are available. So I've set up a number of programs in here already. Um, that kind of give a good overall description of the ways that you can set it up. So first of all, totals is the most popular way to set it up. And I've got three tiers, totals, bronze, silver, and gold. Each one of these has a redeem, an earn multiplier and a redeem multiplier. So in a totals-based program, you are earning points based on the subtotal of your receipt. So in this case, uh, if I had a receipt for $100, I would earn 100 points. My multiplier is 1, and I would redeem that 100 points for $0.01 on my, you know, when I want to redeem them. So a $100 sale would earn me 100 points. That 100 points is cashed in for uh, $1. So that's a 1% conversion. I've got a silver on here where I earn 1.5 points, so a $100 sale would earn me 150 points. And those here cashed in again and keeping the same conversion because I'm earning more points. So I would earn $1.50 and so forth. All right. So a little stingy here on my case, but you know, over time, those points can really add up. Okay. I've got bronze, silver, and gold where you can earn up to two points for your subtotal. Then we go into the percentage rewards. Okay. So these are percentage based, just a straight percent, straight discount percentage you'll see here. So as soon as this customer is added to a sale, in the bronze program, they will get 2% off. In the silver, 4 and in the gold, 6%. Okay, so not as fun. You don't get to track your points as you earn them, um, but uh, it is a little simpler to set up if that's the type of program you need. Okay, we know um, some wholesalers out there will assign uh, discounts based off the wholesale price to their customers based on sales volume. That's a really easy way to set it up. We also have, um, so just again here, these earn multipliers are, and these redeem multipliers can be um, modified. So, you know, and a lot of points-based programs, they, they really like to get you up there in the points. So um, you might earn 200 points for every dollar you spend, and then those are redeemed, um, you know, for even smaller fractions or, or, or a bit higher. So they might be worth 10% uh, or instead of 1%. Okay, so depending on how you want your program structured, we can edit the multipliers on either end. Um, we've also got a free item. So this one, pretty simple. Um, you mark specific items in inventory as eligible for the free item promotion. You mark specific customers as in the free item program, and they have the opportunity to, um, to redeem a free item once. Once it's been redeemed from any of the free items available, they're no longer eligible for it. It's uh, used most often as kind of a one-time uh, reward maybe for some long-term customers or a special promotion you have going on. We next have the items-based program. So this is where we're getting into a little bit more complicated. 
Um, instead of earning points based on the subtotal of the sale, you're earning points based on a points field on the inventory item itself. So this item uh, is worth 30 points. This item is worth 50 points. This item is worth 60 points. You also redeem points based on another field, which is the redemption field. So this item can be um, can be purchased for free for you know 800 points. All right, so it 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 goes from working on off the subtotal to working off the loyalty um, earned and redeemed fields in inventory that you can add once you've installed the plugin and we'll cover all that once we get in there finally we've got a combination which is our items and points based if you really want to get um, you know build a strong um, point system where you can reward people for buying specific items it's not just based off the subtotal but you don't want to limit them to having the, to redeem their points um, for specific items, you can convert the points they earn from um, buying items, which you know might get 30 points for buying these jeans, into currency. So I now I can redeem those points, those 30 points. Um, they're worth uh, you know a penny for each um, each point. So that 30 points is worth um, you know three uh, three dollars or however much. Okay, so you can convert the, the items based points into um, a subtotal or a totals based system for redemption. And you can do it the other way as well. It's just not as common. So you can have it so that I bought $100 worth of goods. I got 100 points. Those 100 points can go towards specific items that have a redemption value of maybe 500. So by the time I spent $500, I can get this item here for free. Okay, so you can mix and match back and forth between the items and the totals. Okay, items and totals will um, have a loyalty balance that is tracked on the customer record, whereas the free item and the percent off, there's no loyalty balance to track. It's just something that they can redeem only. Okay, so I've got a number of them already set up here. I'll just take you through setting one up quickly. You define the program name. So my program name's here, totals bronze. Then you define the level. You've got to create these levels first that you want to assign it to a start and an end date. So the second it reaches the end date, the program will stop working. They can't redeem, um, they can't earn. So keep that in mind. Um, I set those, those end dates pretty far ahead, 2040, 2050 for the programs I have set up. You select the earn type, okay? And so percentage and free item aren't available because they can't earn. You select the redeem type. So that's where you can mix and match a bit. And you've got your earn multiplier and redeem multiplier. That applies to the totals and the items-based programs. The percent reward applies only to the percentage reward program, where you can specify a percentage off their subtotal that they'll receive when added to the sale. Okay, so that's how it works inside the loyalty tool for setting up the programs. The rest of the work is all done on the customer record, um, on the merchandise inventory for your points-based ones, and on the sale. So I've created a number of customers um, that are quick and easy for us to um, see which loyalty program they are in and do a bit of testing in some receipts to see how it all works. Okay, uh, you can create multiple loyalty programs at the same time and then assign customers to different programs. All right, so if you want, if you've got a percentage based program for some um, corporate or for some business to business customers and then you have a points based program for your um, you know your regular um, customers you know that works as well you can have multiple programs um, eligible at the same time customers however can only be in a part of one loyalty program um, so you cannot have customers that were earning you know a percentage off and points on their sales um, also, the loyalty program needs to be set up on the central server, which is usually your main server. If you have multiple stores, it's usually going to be your head office location so that all the stores can communicate with it and it updates in real time. So on the customer record, I've created some handy customers here with the last name loyalty and a little description on them. Your customers 
obviously don't have to have this loyalty info on here. It just identified for me which customers were in which loyalty system. So if I go into my uh, totals, which is our first one, I sell $100 worth, my subtotal is $100, I earn 100 points, that those points convert into actual currency. I'll uh, pull up this first customer here in the totals. And we can see I have this new loyalty box here. It says the customer has been opted into the loyalty program. Now, it's not on a loyalty level, so I haven't used this one yet. So I'm going to uh, change the loyalty level to a totals-based program under bronze. And now this customer is enrolled. They do not have a balance, though. Okay, you can see the enrollment date. And I've got the extra options here on the side. So opt them out of loyalty or opt in if they're not in. Change their loyalty level, which lets you move people into different loyalty programs. These are all the ones I had set up under customer management loyalty. Adjust their loyalty manually. So if for some reason you need to adjust a customer's balance, you can do that if you have permission. And loyalty history is going to give me a complete record of all this customer's loyalty um, when they've been moved through. Okay, so this one was in one program and then they were removed and they were, they were re-added again right now. Let's check our silver. I'm going to put them in the total silver program. Just going to quickly put these um, customers, any that I had removed, back in their programs. So that's the totals based. Then we've got the items based. Again, items-based is going to track a balance when it's enabled. Oh, I don't need to adjust. I'm going to put them in my items-based program. And you can come up with much more fun names than this, like, um, oh, I guess, you know, real-world examples would be the optimum points um, from shoppers, stuff like that. Um, I've just given them easy, simple names so that it's easy, um, easier to understand which program we're testing and, and looking at um, when, as we move through the demonstration. Okay, this is an items and point base, so it would also track a balance, item and point based. And finally, we've got a free item program. I did test this one already earlier, so it's been redeemed. So I'm going to put them back in, and hopefully that triggers it to allow the free item again. And finally, um, the percentage. Okay, so on each customer record, there are a number of fields um, that need to be set up. When you, if you have it set up to automatically enroll people for the default, you won't have to opt them in. You won't have to choose the loyalty level. That will automatically be applied at the point of sale. Same with the prompt. It's going to ask them when they create a customer, do you want to put them in the default record? If you have multiple loyalty programs set up, you can come into your customer tool and change them into a different one from the default. If you're set up to manual only, then you'll have to come into your customers and individually assign them to the program that you want. You, It'll also track their loyalty balance um, and their loyalty history in there. We're going to check a few items out, and I'll show you how it works for um, in your inventory. And then we're going to do uh, some practice sales, and you can see how the points are accumulated and redeemed for each type. Okay, so just to get us started, this item right up here, um, let's go into our item details. We can see I've added a few extra fields. So this item loyalty info on the right is for your free item programs. This loyalty uh, window down at the bottom is for your points-based programs. Percentage programs don't have anything to do with the items. They're totally off the subtotal. And totals-based programs are also based off the subtotal and don't require any updating on the items. Okay, so that's just your free item where you are going to mark some items free, and I'll show you one of those in a minute, and your points-based programs. So in this program, when this item is bought, the customer earns 30 points. 
the customer cannot redeem those points in a points-based program for this item. It has a re redemption of zero. So um, if you wanted to redeem them, you would need to find an item that has a redemption value um, assigned to it in inventory. Okay, so this item doesn't earn any points, but can be redeemed for 500 points. So that first item was a pair of jeans, you know, 30, you'd have to buy quite a few of them in order to redeem it. But once you had enough points, you can choose from the eligible items um, and use your points towards them. So it's up to you if you want to give um, loyalty earned rates on every single item in inventory, like this could also earn you 50 points um, and still be uh, eligible to be redeemed for 500. It's totally up to you. Now, when we were in the loyalty program, you saw that multipliers in there. So what that's doing is your earned multiplier is you're going to take your 50 points here and it's going to multiply it by your earned multiplier. So that was one. So you're going to get 50 points for this. OK, this is where you can get into setting them up a little bit so customers have a harder time, um, you know, figuring out exactly what's what's going on or so you can, um, you know, have a nice uh, big point system where people are, are earning thousands of points on their purchases and it feels really good. You've also got your redemption. So it's going to multiply the points that it requires, the, loyalty, the points redemption, against the redeem multiplier. So in a points-based system, um, you usually keep them both even, one and one, so that they are earning and redeeming um, based on the same uh, multiplier. Okay, whereas a total system, you would want them to earn 100 points for the subtotal of a hundred dollars on a sale, but when they redeem it, you don't want that to be a hundred worth a hundred points, or it'd be worth a hundred dollars. Um, so that's where the multiplier would be, you know, one percent or zero point zero one. Um, so our loyalty redemption here is five hundred. So once I have enough points, I can redeem them for this item for five hundred. You can set up a uh, loyalty earned and a redemption rate on every single item if you want. Uh, that's when we're getting into, you know, really complicated points programs. But, you know, some clients out there, that's worth it to them. You just need to keep in mind that for every new item or style you create, you're going to have to put in the loyalty earned and loyalty redeemed values. And anytime you make a price change or items go on sale, you're going to need to modify those values. OK, because they can't be modified on the sale. So if you discount an item by 30 percent, they're still going to earn whatever loyalty earned value is on there. Okay, so more more maintenance definitely, um, but you can get into really cool programs where, you know, this week you buy these items and you're getting you're getting this much loyalty on them, or this week you buy uh, any of this vendor and you're going to get double loyalty. Programs like that, like you see at some of the major chains and your grocery stores, stuff like that, where different items are worth more or less points on a weekly basis. Okay, but of course requires more management in order to use. Okay, so that's what they look like on the inventory items. Um, and let's have a look at one free item, which I believe I set up right here. So for a free program, the item is marked free item in the bronze program and it's active. So you can set up uh, multiple items. When someone is put in the free item bronze loyalty program, they will have the option when it's added to the sale to choose it for free or to redeem their free item, okay? So let's go into receipts and we'll do a little bit of testing. So for my first uh, sale, we're gonna stick with the totals based because it is the most popular, give you a good understanding of how it works. And see all the tests that I did in here earlier. Okay, and because I named them all loyalty, I should be able to look them up pretty easily. Okay, so let's do our totals based in the bronze category. You can see it's contacting central, so it's getting up to date loyalty values, even if they just bought this two minutes ago at another location they bought an item, you'd see that loyalty available right away. All right, so this customer currently has no loyalty available. Let's create some or add some items to the sale.
this person needs, for whatever reason, 10 pairs of low-rise jeans. Okay, we can see um, on here they've earned 300 loyalty points, and that's based on the subtotal. So it's taking the um, subtotal and it's multiplying it by the totals multiplier that I set up in my program to give me come up. And because that multiplier was one, it's going to give me 300 points for this sale or give this customer 300 points. That's the totals based, it's totally built based on the subtotal or the subtotal with tax, depending on um, your options. So when I tender this sale, and we're going to take cash, and update. Okay, I'm going to go back into a new sale. We will add the same customer. Uh, let's add a brand new item. So maybe that pendant. And we'll do a quick check of the customer's loyalty. So we've got the use loyalty button here on the right. Customer has 300 points. You enter in how many points you want them to earn. It's going to multiply it by your multiplier that we set up in the program. And it'll tell you the discount they have available. So let's say they want to use all 300 of their points. We can see that it's going to give them a discount of $3 for zero points remaining. So this is a 1% points-based program. Okay, and we did set up three levels, bronze, silver, gold, so they can go from one to one and a half to two percent. You could set it up as high as you want. If you want to go from five to 10 to 15 percent, you are more than welcome to do that. I just set this one up a little on the uh, a little on the stingy side, depending on the company, though, um, and the margins. So we can see they've redeemed 300 points worth of loyalty and they're still earning 45 points of loyalty um, off the, this, the remaining subtotal of this sale. I'll tender this sale again because the loyalty won't update until the sale is updated. All right, so that customer's redeemed all 300 points um, for $3 off that sale. So I'm going to do another quick totals based one. Um, and this time I'll use the gold and you can see just the difference between the multiplier and how it's being redeemed. So that's our totals based customer who is enrolled in the totals based gold program. Let's get some low rise jeans on there. All right, so it's exact same um, quantity as before, exact same price, but we can see this time, instead of earning 300 points, they're going to earn 600. That's because the multiplier for the gold program was set to 2, um, which is multiplying the subtotal by 2. So cool thing about the total space program is if you discount the items on the sale, um, it's going to... It's going to affect the subtotal, which, which reduces the amount of points that they can earn. On a points-based program where each item has a set amount of points you earn when you buy it, discounting the item won't affect the amount of points earned. Okay, so just something to keep in mind. A points-based or a totals and points mixed program is going to... Um, it's going to be a lot more management on your end, okay? So I will tender this sale, and the customers earn 600 points, which would multiply by our redeem multiplier, 0.01, for $6 off a future sale.
All right, so I won't go through the process of um, redeeming those because we've already seen how it works the first time. Just wanted to show you that they are earning double the rewards based on that multiplier. Uh, from here, we're going to go into a free item sale just to give you a quick idea of how that works. Okay, so let's select our customer who earns the free item. Okay, we're going to go into inventory. Let's say that we set up this free item program um, for all of our customers, you know, all of our top selling customers. We, we did a filter, um, a bin. We found out all our customers who have bought more than $2,000 worth in the last year. We sent them out a, um, uh, a postcard saying, you, you know, your next sale when you come in, we're going to give you this free pendant bracelet. Um, or I think I marked it as the... Um, humanity bracelet okay so they come in they buy two pairs of jeans or maybe three and they pick up the or you add the humanity bracelet to the sale Okay, so we've got our jeans, our humanity bracelet. All of a sudden, we have access to the use item loyalty button on the right. It's going to communicate with the central service to see if they have any um, loyalty options available. So because I did have this customer enrolled before and I did test it, they're no longer eligible. So it looks like um, taking them out of the loyalty program and putting them back in the free item program is not going to let them access the free item again. Um, but I might be able to create a brand new customer and enroll them in that program in order to redeem the bracelet. Create a new customer for Charlie West. We'll save it. I will um, opt them in. We're going to put them in the free item bronze program. And press OK. So from the point of sale, I created a brand new item. Now they're in the free item program. So if I go to use their loyalty item, I can see that I've got one item on the sale that's eligible, the humanity bracelet, and I can give this as a reward item to the customer. You can have as many items as you want in inventory marked as their free reward. So if you want to give a wide range of options to people, but as soon as they redeem it once, they can no longer redeem um, it again for another one and even disabling it so it looks tied to their customer account that they've redeemed it and it can no longer be redeemed in the future. You'd have to put them on a brand new free item program if you want to do the pro if you want to do it again. Okay? So we can see that item has been discounted 100% and the other items are at their regular price. So, uh, you might be thinking, well, you know, why don't I just give these items away and discount them 100% myself? And you can totally do that. This just takes um, some of the user error options out. Or if you've got uh, multiple stores in a chain and you don't want to have to, to worry about making sure everybody um, has access to, to discount items 100%, you know, a lot of staff wouldn't have permission to do that, then the loyalty program allows it, streamlines the process. Okay, I can then tender the sale from here. And they get that item for free. All right, so that's how the free item program works. Um, next, we're going to do an example of the percentage reward program. So in my loyalty programs, I had set up a bronze, silver, and gold. One was 2% off, one was 4% off, one was 6% off. You can set those um, amounts as high as you want. You can set up as many different levels as you want. 
So again, some business to business clients, um, I know that the, the wholesale industry, it's common to assign your customers a discount from the wholesale price based on the amount of sales they did last year. Okay, so that makes it really easy to set up. You do a bin, and I'll show you the bins later. Capture all your clients who sold between maybe ten and $30,000 last year. Assign them all the loyalty level of bronze so that would, they would receive you know, maybe 10% off all their future sales. I'm going to look up my loyalty customer that I added to the percentage based program, which is percent bronze, so they should get 2% off automatically. Going to add a few items to the sale. Okay, so we've added $300 worth of these low rise jeans to the sale. Down here at the bottom, I've got a few extra new fields, loyalty redeemed, savings, loyalty earned. So the redeemed and earned are for your points-based programs and your totals based. The savings, however, is for your percentage base. So they saved $6.30, 2% off of this sale because they are in the loyalty percent bronze program. Okay, so mine was a little low at 2%. You can go as high or as low as you need. Now I can tender this sale. That's considered, I believe, um, a global discount field of some type. It's separate, but it's kind of the same thing um, and is reportable. All right, so now we're gonna get into the, uh, the more complicated pro points-based programs and we're gonna end with a points total mix. So on this new sale, I'm going to add a customer who is in a points-based program. So items-based, sorry, points on items. So that's where we set a specific point value that's earned on individual items. I'm going to look up the items. And again, it's updating your loyalty um, earned and redemption values when you update the sale. So you cannot use the loyalty points you will earn on the sale towards the same sale that you are currently on. Okay. Believe it or not, it's come up before. So I'm going to add, you know, this is a good one, 10 of these to it. The loyalty earned rate on these items is 30. And um, so that's going to get us 300. I need 500 for that item. So I'm also going to add a number of these bracelets. Okay, we can see the total loyalty earned based on the items on the sale is displayed down here below at 550. So that'll be enough for me to get that, that pendant bracelet that's available for 500 points on my next visit. Now, my multiplier for my earning and redemption was both one. So I'm earning exactly only as many points as was assigned to the item. You can modify the, the uh, multipliers in your program so that um, it's not so straightforward how much you're earning and redeeming, and you, could, you can get the points values um, up a lot higher and make the program a little more fun for customers. Okay, it's based on how complicated you want to make it. I'm going to tender this sale, and then on, we will redeem um, our points for that item. Okay, that loyalty is tied to the customer account from the Centrals database. Um, so I will show you something else quick, which is just what happens when you return an item that's on a loyalty program, okay, that you earn points for. So with the totals based program, it's based on the subtotal. If you have a negative subtotal for returns, it will remove those points. If, um, if you're doing a, an items program, 
where each item has the points available. When you return those items, when you do a negative one, um, it, will, it will deduct loyalty earned from their current balance. All right, so let's add a few items. And we wanted to also um, get that one item for um, redeem it, that there was 500 points. Okay, and I only have a couple items in here um, with just for our test that um, have loyalty earned and loyalty redemption on them. But you could you could set it up for every single item in inventory if you want, or get a specific and only have a loyalty program that applies to certain departments or vendors. So I'm going to say that they're picking up another pair of lower eyes. Um, let's get that pendant bracelet that we wanted to get with our points. And then maybe we will do, oh, I don't think I have loyalty earned on anything else. Um, so we can test that out at the, a negative one to see how it works. Okay, so if I change this item here, or these low rise to minus one. Um, the loyalty earned is dropped accordingly. Okay, so before um, I was getting 50 points for the bracelet, 30 points for the low rise for a total of 80, but because the low rise switched to a negative one, I'm getting the 50 points for the bracelet minus the 30 points um, for the low rise. All right, so I'm just going to remove this item actually from the sale, and I'll show you how you redeem it. So you've added an item um, with a redemption value of 500. The customer has 550 points available, and there is a points balance field that we can add to the sale as well. So you can see as soon as it pops up, as soon as you add them to the sale, um, how many points they have available. I'm gonna press use item loyalty because it's an item-based program. The pop-up is gonna show me how much it costs to redeem it, my current point balance. Because my point balance is higher than the redemption and if I had multiple items on here, um, I could choose which one I wanted to put my points towards, I can press redeem. I've used 500 points, I have 50 remaining, and this item will be um, completely free, discounted 100% with my points. Okay, if it was the wrong item, you do have the option to remove it, but I'm going to tender an update. The customer came in to pick up their free item with their points. All right, so the last one that we're gonna do is kind of a mix, and that is the one that I would say is uh, more popular at a lot of large retailers where individual items have specific amounts of points you can earn and those points convert into a currency value you can use against the subtotal of your bill. All right, so I've got one last customer that I set up on a loyalty program and that is the items and point based. So for this program, they earn points based on the earn value of the items. So I'm gonna add some of those low rise jeans that have the 30 points for each one that's purchased. Let's just give this a nice big number to make it easy to see. So we can see that they're gonna earn 3000 points off this. Um, because they're earning 30 points for each one on the sale and I've added 100. Okay, a little bit confusing because the subtotal is 3,000 and it looks a lot like a total space program, but that loyalty earned could be 30, could be 50, could be 100, however much points you want to give for the item. They're going to earn 3,000 points. Those points will be converted um, because it's on a totals based redemption. So you can have different earning from redemption and those points will be converted to currency they can use um, towards a future sale. So that way you don't have to have loyalty redemption amounts on specific items, just the earning amount. I'm going to tender this sale. Okay, 
Um, if I didn't mention it before, with permission, you can manually edit. Oh, and I clicked print by accident, so we'll just close this. Uh, with permission, you can edit a customer's balance. So if for some reason um, the item wasn't updated properly or um, you know you want to give the customer some points to accommodate them for something, um, with permission, you can modify their points value directly. So let's add that customer again to a new sale. And it was the items and points based program. I'll add a few items to a sale. Because we were converting the points you earn off items to a currency value, um, I don't need to add any items that have points or redemption points on, assigned to them in inventory. So I'll just add a couple extra items here that we haven't used yet. Okay, so we've got a subtotal of 104. The customer in this case has 3,000 points. Each point is worth one penny. So they can choose to use, um, you know, if we wanted to use all 3,000, they would be able to discount their sale by $30. Okay, so that's that's a because the amount of points earned were 30 on the jeans, and the jeans were also $30, again, we're looking at about a 1% program here. However, you could have had those jeans worth 50 points, 100 points, however much you want. All right, so I've used their points. As soon as this sale is tendered and updated, their points balance will be reduced again to zero, but they will earn points um, if the item's on the sale. So it's a mixed program. So if those items had um, points earned, they would have earned points again off this sale, but they did not, so they won't earn any points this time. Okay, so just keep in mind that with the items-based programs and the mixed programs, a lot more uh, work is involved in maintaining those earned and redemption values. And I'll update. And that's basically it for how the four different point systems work and how they're used on sales. Um, there are loyalty, I mean, we have these loyalty fields down here and those are reportable and you can track how much is loyalty is earned and redeemed on your receipts for the day. There's also some custom X out fields uh, that are available that will show on the X outs exactly how much loyalty has been earned and redeemed. Finally, I want to talk a bit about um, bins and scoring. So using bins and scoring, you can identify um, a number of different customer metrics like visits over time, total spending, average sale value, length of relationship, you can then opt in customers to loyalty programs based on those. So you can tell Retail Pro, go find all my customers who um, who have been a customer since you know 2010. So customers who have been customers since 2010, these are my oldest customers, and maybe I want a last sale date of last year, so I know they're still active, and then put them all in this program, my loyalty gold program. Um, you can build it to say, find everybody who purchased more than $2,000 last year, put them in my silver program. Okay, so we use customers, bins, and scoring to identify groups of customers and push them all into a loyalty program at the same time. Um, because we're running low on time here, I've got a couple that I set up earlier. One just for top customers. We can see it's, uh, I set this one up for customers who have purchased more than $2,000 for all time. Okay, um, you can set up a couple different values. So if I wanted three different levels, I could have a customers who have purchased between 2001 and $2,800, then from 2852 to 4500, 4500 and up. So I could apply my, my gold, my bronze, silver and gold to the different customers that I've isolated or that I've identified um, in these sales groups. Oh, and I pressed add customer by accident. So if for some reason you do want to add somebody manually, you can add the customer manually, add the customers to the bins. OK, 
Okay, and this isn't a demonstration on how customer bins and scoring works today, so I'm not gonna get too far into this, but just to show you how it works, you can build, um, you can have Retail Pro identify these customers. So this is everyone who for all time has had total sales between 2,000 and 2,847. And it's identified them and I can apply them to a loyalty bin all at once. So I can say, I wanna put all these customers in my bronze bin, I'm gonna choose my bronze loyalty, I'm gonna apply it to the loyalty bin. All these customers are now in that program. I can do the same thing for the customers between 28.52 and 45.71. I'm gonna change it to the uh, silver. So total silver, opt them in, and apply it to the loyalty bin. Now all those customers are in my silver program, okay? So a great way to get started um, with a loyalty program if you wanna set up multiple tiers um, with your bronze, silver, gold, you know, however you wanna name them um, for different customers, all right? Is to use customer bins and scoring to identify those customers and sign them all up at once. It's a good, good way to get started and then you can manage it going forward, okay? Now, when you run this the next time, customers will move in and out of the bins so you can just reassign everyone to a, their, their new loyalty program. Um, that takes care of pretty much how the loyalty program works. It is from Retail Pro 9, so it's developed by Retail Pro, but it's not included in your base license, okay? It is a pretty advanced program. It uses the Essentials database that they've developed um, after Retail Pro 9, so there is an extra cost involved. Now. For the cost, it is a uh, there's a $325 charge per site, okay? So depending on how many locations you have, keep that in mind, $325 per site for the license. And then there's a 15% uh, software assurance uh, fee for the... Um, for the loyalty license for each site as well. So that, for most customers, that's gonna come out to about $48 annually on your software assurance for the loyalty plugin. All right, and you need to have an active software assurance as well in order to um, access the loyalty license. So just keep that in mind. Now, if you would like any more information on it, um, you are more than welcome to contact uh, CRS in the sales department. So if you want some more information on pricing and such, sales would be the best ones to give you a hand. If you have some more questions on configuration, how it works, um, you have some ideas and you want to see, you know, we can test them and play around with it to make sure it's going to work before you go ahead, go ahead and give us uh, the support department a call or contact us. The support line 1-866-204-5511 or email us at support at retailbycrs.com and that's retailbycrs.com so this webinar as with the others will be available on our youtube channel and on our website um, within a week or two okay thank you all for coming and checking out this presentation this month's webinar uh, look forward to next month it is probably going to be on the uh, import plugin or the DMA tool, they call it, that allows you to import items, purchase orders, and vouchers into Retail Pro 9. Thanks.